Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to a brand new episode of Q&A in Japan, where I answer your questions about life in Japan. And today's episode of Q&A in Japan, I'm going to be answering 15 questions as they pertain to my final year at university. And we're also going to be talking about what I plan to do after graduating. So with that said, let's get into it. So question number one, what am I doing with my life right now? Well, wow. <laughs> isn't that a bit of an ex existential question? I guess um, what I'm doing right now is just doing my best to just get through this final year of school so I can finally graduate, get my bachelor's and uh, carry on to the next piece of business. But it's not easy. You know, it just feels like I'm just kind of sitting here all the time, not really going out and doing something on this nice sunny day. But I will be doing something after this video. Promise. <laughs> so question number two. Am I going to stay in Japan or go back to America after graduating? Truth be told, I don't really know yet. Uh, my plans are to try to stay in Japan as best I can. And with a bachelor's degree, that's a lot easier to do than with an associate's. So I should be able to get a work visa and uh, continue my stay out here in Japan. But if that falls through and I have to move back to the States, then I have to move back to the States. But right now, time's recording. I'm currently looking for work, visa sponsored work to be more specific out here in Japan. And I'll just move on to that post graduation. So question number three, what am I planning on doing after graduation? Well, Shit, I already kind of spoiled it, didn't I? Like I said, uh, my immediate plans post-graduation are to find work out here in Japan, uh, get a work visa, and continue to stay out here. But as far as long-term, I would like to, you know, continue to work in the video editing, filmmaker, cinema industry, content creation, whatever the fuck you call this thing that I'm in. It goes by so many names and they change all the time. So it's it's hard even for me to keep track. And uh, yeah, just continue living my life out here in Japan. So question number four. Which year was the hardest for me, either academically or personally? Well, I got to say, I guess it would be my sophomore year when I was still going to school out in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. At that point, I had just gotten out of the Navy, just went back to America and just started up uh, at college for the first time in nearly 10 years. So I had a lot of readjustment to do and it was just very rough on me. And I still didn't really know what I wanted to do in life and certainly didn't know what the hell I wanted to do in college either, other than just graduate, get the diploma, Japan. I was just going through just a major identity crisis. Um, I was still mentally unpacking everything that had happened to me uh, when I was stationed abroad in uh, Yokosuka. Eventually it led me to take a gap year to uh, stay with my parents, help them work on their real estate video business. Went back to school, stayed with my brother, work on my GPA, save up, and eventually came back out here to Japan, to uh, Lakeland University of Japan, where I've been at ever since. So question number five, how have I changed from freshman to senior year? I'd say that the, the major change between me uh, going back to school at uh, Western Michigan in Kalamazoo back in 2016 to me now in uh, 2022, woo, getting ready to graduate finally, is that I'm a lot more sure of myself as far as what I wanna do moving forward with a career in uh, filmmaking, video editing, that sorts of stuff. Whereas when I first uh, went back to school, I didn't really know who I was, what I wanted to do, any of that stuff. So I'd say I'm definitely a lot more sure of myself and uh, of my own skills. And I'm also more open to discussing my time on YouTube with uh, classmates, teachers, stuff like that, as it applies to a lot of topics that are brought up in class, which is something I never would have done back at Western for sure. So question number six, what am I looking forward to most after graduating? I'd have to say I'm just looking forward to being able to 
really schedule out more ambitious filming projects. I think one of the major things that I've had to deal with uh, going to school out here is that I could still, you know, film and do stuff out here, but I had to kind of rein it in a little bit because I could only schedule so much and I could only take so much time off from work and I can only, you know, I had to schedule everything around school because, you know, it's the reason I'm here. It's what my visa is all about. It's a little difficult, but uh, it's definitely not impossible. And also the obvious, you know, homework, tests, midterms, finals, I don't to deal with any of that shit anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to be a lot better off mentally uh, for it, I think. So question number seven. I've ever dealt with imposter syndrome, and if so, how do I deal with it? So even though I said earlier that I'm a lot more confident in my skills now than when I first started going back to school, I gotta say, I still deal with imposter syndrome a lot. Like say if I'm applying to a job and they don't call me back, or I send an email to somebody saying, I'd really like to work with you, really like to make some videos for you. Um, let's you know see if we can schedule something out. And I don't hear anything back from them. You know, it just makes me think, is it me? Is it my skills? Am I just not enough of this? Am I too much of this? Like, what can I do to improve? You know, it's hard to figure out what you can improve upon if you're not given any sort of feedback. So you end up just in this uh, anxiety spiral, as I call it, just like overthinking everything and thinking that everybody hates you and you're just a dumb piece of shit that doesn't know anything. Like just stay in your lane, Navy boy leads to a lot of really bad anxiety spirals, at least in my case anyway. But, but what I do to deal with it is uh, basically just keep pressing on. You know, if um, I'm starting to feel like, well, maybe my editing skills aren't really good enough. You know, what am I doing trying to reach out to this person and that person? Like, who the hell am I to want to work with so-and-so? Like, I'm fucking nobody. I don't have millions of followers and shit like what the fuck am i doing trying to talk to these people and it does in some way kind of motivate me a little bit to have that bit of a chip on my shoulder to like prove people wrong prove that you know i do have the skills and you know fuck you you're wrong fuck you i'm right which isn't always healthy but it does help to uh move the plot forward sometimes and so question number eight what's my biggest regret about my time in university so I would have to say my biggest regret of all time in university is not taking time to uh, spend with friends and for um, obvious reasons, it's kind of hard to, but I try to get in when I can, obviously depending on their schedules, my schedules, and especially with me not living in Tokyo, it's a bit harder for me to go and just casually hang out with people because I have to really plan it because I got to make sure, you know, I make it before the last train moves out. But you know, we uh, we make it work, do what we can. At the same time, you know, I still feel like I, you know, I could definitely have uh, done a lot more. You know, hung out with people and just not have focused so much on schoolwork and video editing work, and just go out and hang out with people and be an actual human fucking being for once in my goddamn life. Another regret that I have is uh, not learning Japanese while I was in school. Obviously, you know, you pick up a couple of words and phrases here and there, but I never really sat down and was uh, studious with uh, studying Japanese. You know, there is a part of me that regrets it. And there's another part of me that's like, well, maybe if I took it as seriously, seriously as I wanted to, then it would have affected my, my studies, would affect my grades. I just wanted to graduate, get that degree, and then uh, maybe later study some Japanese. But there is still a part of me that, you know, thinks, well, maybe I could have fit in a couple of, you know, Anki deck sessions or, you know, maybe every other weekend or something like that. I could have like talked to somebody who was, you know, really good with Japanese. Like one of my friends, he reached out to me, offered me uh, Japanese lessons and stuff like that, which is really, really generous of him. And there is a part of me that regrets not taking him up on that offer. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I got to put my studies first. After graduation, I'm definitely going to be uh, studying a lot more Japanese for sure. That's going to be uh, one of my main goals post-graduation, which I forgot to mention. 
earlier was to get good at them Nihongos. Desio? Nay. Question number nine. Do any of the other students know what they're doing? That is certainly a very good question. <laughs> it's hard to say, really, because there's like some students who are like me, you know, they're very majime, they're very like serious and studious and you know, they already have stuff lined up. You know, they want to go study abroad or work for an international company that uh, prioritizes English. And there's some of them who are just like, well, this is my school and these are my classes. And, you know, once I get my degree, great. They don't really have many other plans beyond that. So it's just kind of a mixed bag, really. And that goes for both international and Japanese students. And then question number 10, the perfect 10. What are my biggest motivators? As I said earlier, the, uh, the chip on my shoulder, the willingness, the want to prove myself and my skills to the general public, whether it's uh, on YouTube or on other social media platforms, or just, you know, to other people who, you know, I have it in my head that they think that I can't do what I say I can do. And I just want to prove them wrong. You know, always kind of had that even growing up, you know, because I didn't always grow up with uh, a lot of money. And it wasn't until later that my folks started, you know, making a decent income for themselves. In school, you know, I didn't have the nicest clothes. I didn't exactly drive the nicest car. Didn't exactly have the most money either. So I just had to make do with what I had. And it definitely affected me a lot. But also, you know, just the main motivation to finally, after all these fucking years, actually get my degree and then later transition that to a work visa and uh, continue to stay out here in Japan. But even if the work visa thing doesn't happen, at the end of the day, I'll still have the degree. So even if I don't use it for anything, I can still like check it off the box and be like, you know what? I set a goal for myself and I followed through. So question 11. What is one thing I wish I knew before going to college? There's a lot of things I wish I would have known before going to college. If I had to name just a few, it would be to prioritize being more of yourself instead of who you think people want you to be. You know, just be more sure of yourself and what you can bring to the table rather than just try to fit in where you can. And it may not work for you in the short term because there's gonna be a lot of people that don't like what you like and aren't about what you're about. But eventually you find your group, you know, life gets a lot more better. <laughs> Obviously I haven't studied English in a while. Life gets a lot better, I will say. Uh, another thing, especially as it pertains to me, would be I wish I would have known that I could study abroad out here on the GI Bill and have maintained a reasonable BAH as well because uh, when I got out of the Navy, I had a little over $12,000 saved up. When I moved back to America, I had to use half of that on a car, and the other half for living expenses until the GI Bill kicked in. And back then, I was uh, spending money like I was still making it like I was in the Navy, and I wasn't anymore. So I kind of learned the hard way on how to properly spend stuff and ended up losing all the money and had to go work at McDonald's and just barely scrape by. Whereas if I would have been able to go to a college right out of the Navy, I mean, obviously I'd still have to return to the States to out process, but after that, buy a plane ticket, come on back and uh, get that all settled. If that were to happen, obviously, you know, I would have had the $12,000 to uh, tide me over and then when I had the GI Bill once that kicked in to help pay for living expenses and whatever I didn't spend, just continue adding to the savings account. You know, if there was times where I needed a little bit of extra coin, I could always pull from it. And I wouldn't have to worry about that last semester of, uh, of college as well. There's a lot that can be learned from me making these videos and teaching you guys about the mistakes that I made. So that way, hopefully, if uh, like you're a recently separated veteran or you're looking to separate that you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. That's why I make made all these videos talking about uh, the benefits of the GI Bill, because I think it's the uh, best benefit 
that any veteran can utilize. And it's sad because I know there's a lot of veterans out there that don't use the GI Bill just because they think, well, you know, I didn't do so good in school before and, you know, I'm dumb and I'm not going to utilize it. Or, you know, maybe they got like a family or something like that. Or maybe their family or the friends of a friend like got them this, you know, kick ass cush job and they think they don't need the degree. I think everybody should at least take advantage of it. You know, if anything, it's it's free fucking money, dude. Like, you don't have to worry about, you know, paying for, you know, your house, apartment, wherever you're at. Just sit and just kind of, you know, work on college, which is, you know, it has its stresses, as I've mentioned in many of my videos, including this one. But, you know, comparing the stresses of college to my stresses when I was active duty, two completely different things. And I would take the stresses of college any day of the week, twice on Sundays, over my stre my stresses being in the Navy, especially out in Yokosuka, for sure. So question number 12, am I gonna stop making my own videos on YouTube when I find a job after graduating? Long and short of it is no, I'm not gonna be stopping making my own videos on YouTube, but on the other hand, I do notice a bit of a trend with uh, how I make content here on YouTube these days. And that is, you know, the more work that I get editing for other people and working on these different projects and all this, that, and the other, it does take time away from me making my own content. And it's something that's quite frankly, really hard for me to deal with. You know, I wanted to make a, a dedicated video kind of talking about it, but I didn't really know how to approach it without coming off too whiny. So I decided to scrap it. Yeah, the long and short of it is, it's, you know, kind of a shuffling of responsibilities, you know, working for other people and still making content uh, for my own channels. And hopefully once college is done, I'll have a lot more time to be able to better balance things. So I'm hoping to be able to still make my own content, but I also recognize that work and stuff like that comes first. Because, you know, hey, gotta pay to uh, play and, you know, keep the lights on it is what it is. So question number 13, what am I scared about after graduating? Well, there's a lot of things I'm scared about after uh, graduating. And one of the main ones is not being able to find a job and having to move back to America with no money, no place. Um, I don't even have my driver's license anymore. <laughs> My uh, driver's license ex expired when I was staying out here because I was originally going to go back home and uh, renew it during Thanksgiving. But obviously with the, uh, the you know what, kind of delayed things, ended up expiring and you know I haven't been back in America since 2019. So I haven't had a chance to, uh, to renew my driver's license. So you know I won't be able to, to drive around uh, first starting out. I'll have to get my license again and you'll find a job and find an apartment and you know just thinking about all the uh expenses of everything another fear of mine would be to have to just say fuck it and go teach english out here because it's all the work i can get i feel like you know with with all the stuff that i'm doing for uh for other people putting together videos shooting videos as well i've come a long way and like i said i really want to make this my career and to have to take a little detour teaching english just to keep the lights on while i recognize it might be a necessity you know considering what the job market will be like once i graduate it is something that i do fear because you know i don't want to be out of the industry for too long because it's uh, very much out of sight out of mind so question number 14. Do I feel pressure to have everything figured out since I'm in my mid thirties? I'm not really pressured by my folks like I used to when I was younger. Like they really pressured me hard to, uh, you know, obviously join the Navy and uh, do a bunch of other things when uh, I was much younger. But nowadays, you know, they kind of see what I'm doing, you know, with YouTube and all this other stuff. And they're just like, you know, we're, we just want you to be happy, Andy. So just go and do your thing. So if there's any sort of pressure for me to, you know, quote, figure out my life, you know, it's all coming internally. Thankfully, that sort of pressure isn't really as much of a factor 
for me as it used to be when I was younger. You know, when I was younger, I, you know, had a lot of expectations for what my life would be. You know, you'd graduate high school, go to college, graduate college, get a job, and then just do that to retirement. You know, it was the basic life course that I was on back in the day. But uh, I've taken a lot of detours <laughs> since that time. You know, once I hit my 30s, I was just like, fuck it, man. <laughs> you know, we're going to do what we're going to do, right? And the last question, question number 15. Will I be sad to leave university or am I ready for the next chapter in life? This one's kind of hard to answer. I have to say... I feel more ready for the next chapter in my life than I am sad to to leave university. But at the same time, you know, I've been at Lakeland since 2020, been going on over two years. It'll be about two and a half once I graduate at Lakeland. And I've been doing this whole college thing for a while now, doing it on the GI Bill far back as 2016. You know, I originally started college back in 2004 after I graduated high school. Despite all the uh, the setbacks and everything, you know, it felt like college was a big motivator for me through pretty much my entire adult life. And to finally have it come to a definitive celebratory conclusion, I me mean, graduating, it feels like I'm ready, but also, you know, there's a big part of my adult life that's uh, coming to an end. So. Yeah, I am a little sad about it. And obviously, you know, seeing all my friends go their separate ways, whether they decide to stay in Japan or go elsewhere in the world, you know, there's part of me that feels sad about that too. But yeah, it's just uh, a lot of conflicting emotions. You know, I, I don't think I'll know for sure until, you know, I have the paper in hand. And even then, it'll probably take me some time to, uh, to process everything. So yeah, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Q&A Japandi, where I answer your questions about life in Japan. And if you have any questions about life in Japan, be sure to leave them in the comments down below in the boopy boops, and I'll do my best to answer them. And they may even be featured on a video like this. So with that said, guys, this is Andy. Sign up for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.